Welcome to CalCast, your creator national podcast. God Network News, Episode 140. Welcome, GNN fans, to another episode of God Network News, the podcast that tells you what God's doing around the world, not what CNN tells you, but what GNN tells you is going on in the world. If you're tired of listening to all of that crisis network news and you want to hear what God's doing, well, give us a listen. We're interviewing a dear brother, Jonathan, and his testimonies line up so perfectly with what we're going through right now with the coronavirus. His testimony of how God used him as he reached out and touched people who were sick. This brother in his ministry walked along the streets and found people in dire need of simple, basic health care. He came and he gave what he had the friendship and the love and the acceptance that he showed them transformed their lives and he saw huge people movements unreached peoples coming to christ through his ministry in africa we are so excited to be able to bring to you these wonderful stories Greetings, God Network News fans. We have another great story uh, from Africa, from our uh, friend uh, Jonathan. And uh, so it's just, I hope you're you're encouraged and inspired and challenged to uh, live a life that will uh, impact other people in practical ways, but also to open their hearts to the gospel message. And that's really what these stories have really been all about that Jonathan has been telling us. So Jonathan has another story of uh, God moving in people's lives. Hi. Um, uh, yeah, I have a story of this particular lady and uh, she she had filariasis. So filariasis is it's also uh, known as elephantiasis. Oh, yeah, elephantiasis. So it's a disease that uh, swells, makes your legs or arms to swell. It becomes, it's called elephantiasis because it's, it's called like elephant's leg right. as well. So it's caused by a mosquito that actually uh, bites you and then it affects all your lymph nodes and then your legs begin to swell. Mm. And it's very easy to treat and uh, you can just take a, a, a single dose medication and you can get healed. Wow. But the problem is like uh, when people get to, uh, get, don't go to the hospital and then, yeah, when the legs are deformed, you can still treat it, but then you cannot uh, restore or bring the leg back to normal. Mm. So there are many people uh, in that island that have this uh, disease. And so this particular lady, she had it, both legs were like huge, very swollen. She, she couldn't even lift the legs easily. It was very hard for her to walk. But also in the, in the midst of that, there were also infections like wounds in the legs. So. And uh, one day I was passing by and I saw like she's sitting on the, under a tree with all these flies, like so many flies around. Mm. And then when I saw her, I stopped and uh, I, I was speaking to her. It was very difficult even to sit in that place because the wounds that was so infected and, and smelling so bad. Mm. But I just uh, I just wanted to hear from her and 
and she was like very isolated. The, the family was sitting like so far away. And uh, so I started asking questions to, yeah, to her. And she didn't want to speak much. She was very quiet. I would ask a question and she would just say one word. And I even called someone from the family uh, because I thought maybe she doesn't speak. Oh. And uh, so I called someone from the family and they said, no, she speaks, she can speak, you can go and speak to her. And they didn't want even to take me and to where she was because mm. she was, no one wanted to sit next to her. Mm. So I said, no, no, go and speak to her, she can uh, 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 speak. So I was insisting and I offered myself, can I help, can I um, wash your wounds and things like that. So I did a research. And uh, also I had uh, some friends from Australia because I did a school of primary health care there. Mm -hmm. So I got in touch with the friends and my school leader. And uh, so she gave me some suggestions of the medication to give her. So I went to the pharmacy, I bought the medication, I gave it to her. And then, um, uh, yeah, um, the disease, She, I took her later on, like I think was like, after giving the medication, two months later, I took her to the hospital in the city to see and do all these blood tests to mm -hmm. see if the disease was there. So then they said the disease was not there, was gone. Mm. But then the legs could not uh, 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 be restored back mm. to normal because mm. it was totally deformed, mm. and it was she was going she was going to live with that for her whole life. Mm. And uh, there is no surgery also, so they cannot even do a surgery on that stage. Mm. But anyway, so, and when I brought her back, um, I was still washing the wounds, and I got some soap and different um, things for wound care, mm -hmm. and I got uh, antiseptics and so many things. I would clean the wound every day and, and then uh, dry them off and, and wrap it. And then uh, a few weeks later, all wounds were healed. There was no more wounds, no more pus, no more smell. You're listening to God Network News Podcast with your host, Cal Curtis. Look up our website at godnetworknews.com. I, I, I went to the city to, I asked the sh this, uh, how do you call cobbler, like a shoemaker. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I, I took the size, I took a paper and I drew a legs. And then um, uh, I went there to ask this shoemaker to make a shoe, I mean shoes for her. And then so he made shoes by the size of the legs because uh, she would get wounds and infection because she was walking bare feet all the oh, time. Right. So I asked him to make sandals, mm. and he made this shoemaker make made really good sandals. Mm. And then I it was very cheap, and then I took the sandals to the island and I gave it to her. She was so happy. She was mm. smiling, and by that time she was already talking. And I was so surprised to see her talking like that wow. because in the first day she just didn't want to talk. Mm. And I even thought she doesn't talk, <laughs> but then uh, later on she was talking, smiling, saying, thank you so much for looking after me, thank you so mm -hmm. much for washing my wounds, and you're not my father, my mother, look, my mother always, whenever I wake up, I sit here on this tree from morning to evening, mm -hmm. they just come and bring me food and they just leave it like that in the distance, there is your food. Mm. And uh, my own mother doesn't even sit next to me, but mm. you, a foreigner, not even relative mm. or anyone, you just come and sit with me like that. So she was very touched by that. Mm. And then um, I, uh, she was also asking, like, but why was I doing that? Who mm. was I? And, and uh, so I, I was telling her that there is someone that lives in me and uh, he, uh, he loves you so much mm. and um, his name is uh, Jesus and I started sharing the gospel to her mm. and uh, she was like, she was asking like, what can I do to, to know him, to have him, like you say, he lives in you, how can he live in you? So I was like sharing all these stories mm. 
from the scriptures and she is like i want him i want him she said two times wow. with a big smile on her face and i said easy you can have him like and then there i was like you know i was so excited and praying for her and um and then she said what can i do i want to be baptized right then and there and she said, I want to be baptized, and uh, I'm really, really interested, and I, I really want to follow this Jesus mm. for all the days of my life. And then um, in that place, there was no water even. And, wow. uh, but the next day, I called some of our disciples as well, and uh, we went there and we baptized her in the, in the second day. And then in that same house, uh, we started like this gathering because she wow. told the gospel to the mom <laughs> and the mom was the second one to believe. Wow, the same God. lady, she said, you know what, I've never seen such love. Mm. It's not possible. I'm your mother and uh, being your mother was very difficult to sit next to you, but a stranger just comes and he sits next to you mm. and I want to repent, you know, mm. because she was so touched that a stranger would come and sit with our daughter when the mother couldn't sit with the daughter. Yeah. And she said, that's not possible. There is something uh, in that person that I also want to experience. And as you're sharing the gospel to me and to see what, that, uh, what uh, he did to you, I'm just touched. And I want to have this love as well in my heart. Mm. And so the mother was the next believer. And then uh, both of them, they were sharing the gospel to the neighbors. Wow. There was one church that gets together exactly in that place. Wow. Up to now. And a number of believers already from that area. Wow, so that's, that's the story amazing. Of, of Donia Hane. Yeah. yeah, Donia, another beautiful story. That's incredible. Another great story of the, the same thing, of you walking by. And, you know, I think of that story in the New Testament where Peter is coming out and John and they come out of the temple area and there's a man there that's crippled mm -hmm. and they see him and they silver and gold I don't have but what I have I'll give to you yes, you know true. and I think if they had the ability to help that man you know physically yes. with medicine or whatever they would have done that you know but they were like well all I can do for you is pray for you and he was healed supernaturally but to me, what you did is just as supernatural as if there was an instant healing, yes. maybe even more amazing because you were willing to be there with her through that difficult time that even their family, her family yes. basically pushed her aside. They couldn't handle it. So that's, that's incredible. It's great, a powerful, powerful testimony and story. And the gospel just spread in that community as a result of it. I'm sure all the neighbors knew everything too and the whole story and uh, was told. So yeah, that's very powerful. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for that great story. enjoyed this episode, please consider donating to help us continue to bring exciting stories fresh from the field. Visit our website at godnetworknews.com and select the PayPal link on the right side of the page or consider becoming a Patreon partner to receive access to more valuable materials exclusive to our members.